All right, let's move on in. We'll get started here this afternoon. Let's take our hymnals, turn over to page number 389. 389, let's all stand together. I will sing the wondrous story. Page 389, we'll sing all five verses. 389. I will sing the wondrous story. turn over to page number 201 201 more about jesus would i know more of his grace to others show to sing all four verses page number 201 <laughs> more about jesus would i
Aren't you thankful? More about Jesus. You say, how much more can I know? We'll spend the rest of our lives. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 7, says that in the ages to come, he might show unto us the exceeding riches of his grace toward us through Christ Jesus. I believe this. We ain't seen nothing yet. And uh, so looking forward to it. We want to rejoice, Miss Gail standing back here in that purple jacket and uh, just was able to speak with Miss Crystal and uh, got salvation settled um, this morning. And so we're thankful for that. Been coming for a while, had some questions and uh, lived a religious life, no question whatsoever that she was religious. But um, she said, I just didn't realize how simple it was to be able to trust Christ and it's not all them works. And, uh, and so she got it settled this morning and so we're thankful for that amen i think she's going to step out and get baptized right now when she steps outside because it's poor and no she steps out she's got to step out now but how many of y'all rejoice miss gail got saved today isn't that a blessing and uh, we're so thankful praise the lord miss gail and uh let's go to the lord in prayer and we'll thank the lord for all of this father we sure do love you lord i'm so thankful for the gospel of the lord jesus christ and Lord, I'm so thankful that our eternal hope is not in churches, it's not in church doctrine. Lord, those change and those come and go. But Lord, the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ endureth forever. And uh, Lord, we're so thankful that our assurance is found in the Scriptures. And so Lord, thank you for continuing to speak to hearts. And uh, Lord, we know that the gospel still works, the Holy Spirit of God still continues to draw people to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're thankful for that. Lord, thank you for this morning service. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Lord, we look forward to all that you have for us. Lord, may we continually draw closer to you and know more about Jesus than what we ever have. And uh, we'll thank you for what you'll do now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and uh, we are so thankful for all of it, all that the Lord's doing. Thankful for the ones that were baptized this morning. Looking forward to more um, over the next couple weeks. I, I thought about it as I walked back upstairs, and I said, you know, I said, we just baptized too. I don't want baptism to get to a religious ritual, but I want it to be a rejoicing time every time. I don't want to just take it for granted. All right, we're going down, we're baptizing a couple. I thank the Lord. Do you know how many churches... They haven't filled their baptistry in three years. And uh, you know that's true. You're out there, Brother Charlie, Brother Josh, and uh, out there, Brother Matthew's preaching down in New Jersey today, and uh, he talks to us about it. I I've been in some churches, they're using their baptistry as, as a storage place, that you walk up there and there's stuff being stored in there. And I'm thinking that that's no expectation of what God's doing. And uh, they don't expect to need it. And so, but I'm thankful those that were baptized. I appreciate two of our teenagers, Teresa and Danny, making that public profession of faith. You know, it's wonderful for someone to get saved. It's, a, it's, a, it's an added blessing when they admit it publicly afterwards. And uh, we thank the Lord for it. Let's be faithful. Pray for this upcoming week, all that the Lord has for us. And uh, yes, we are heading up there. Some have said, well, what if it rains? We're going to get soaked, and we're going to have the time of our lives. My wife keeps reminding me that my dad always told us there's only two things that melt, sugar and wicked witches. <laughs> and he always said, you're not sugar. <laughs> he said that to me, not my wife. Don't worry, okay? And uh, but we're looking forward to a great week. Listen, I do believe that God is doing some work in hearts. And uh, I, I think we're, we're already started going up there. 
okay? And so maybe it won't take two or three days uh, for yielding and letting the Lord break through some hearts. I, I believe some great things are going to happen. And uh, we'll just pray and ask in the Lord to be able to work in a special way. Don't miss Thursday night because you do have to come pick your kids up, okay? And uh, we only get them till Thursday. And so, listen, Lily and Eva, I am working down here on Bella to see if she'll open up that toy inventory a little bit more for you to be playing with while she's gone. And so we're working on that. And so I, I know everyone wasn't worried about her younger brother playing with all her toys <laughs> while she's gone. But we're going to have a good time. Pray, pray, pray. Ask God to be able to work in a special way. I don't want to walk into this week either saying it's just another week. We're ready to go. We're packing up afterwards. But listen, that hurt Samson. And he said, I'm just going out like I did every other time. And I don't, I don't want that. I, I want it fresh and new every time we're going and asking the Lord to burden our hearts for it, okay? And so we're going to take just a few moments, take a few testimonies, and then um, sing another song. And then the Magners are going to be singing for us before Brother Charlie Russell is going to be preaching for us. And so very quickly, let's take about five or ten testimonies, um, maybe just from this past week. If you got something God worked in your heart over the past week, a blessing, something, if you don't have anything in the past week, you can go back a little bit longer. Mr. Rude. I just, I, I still get amazed, you know, shouldn't be surprised, but still amazed that, you know, the, the Lord starts working in, you know, on some, on your heart about something, and then uh, came into Sunday morning, well, Sunday school last week, and he just, he just hit it, you know, it's just how the Lord just puts things in place, it's just I'm amazing. Yeah, yeah, don't miss Sunday school. You never know what you're missing. Okay, someone else? Word of testimony. Go ahead. I praise the Lord. Um, going into this uh, this weekend, I was having a hard time, just discouraged, down, coming into Sunday. And I got studying into what I was going over for Sunday school. And it, it, it hit me because uh, we were wrapping up the book of Hosea and dealing with the dew the, uh, the Lord was uh, showing there to the people of Israel. And it's the third time that the dew was mentioned in the book of Hosea. And I brought it up to the teenagers this morning because it, it hit me that too often I look at the first two mentions, they were in a negative sense. Yeah. Because it was on the people of Israel trying to be the blessing that they were looking for. They, they'd work with their hands, build their gods, try to build their own blessings, so to speak. And it, it hit me as I was coming into this weekend when I was looking at that third one, it, the reason why there was going to be blessing was because Israel got off the focus of making their own blessings and focused on where God was giving them the blessing. Amen. And so that focus of getting it off of, okay, well, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, but rather, okay, let God take care of it. Amen. God's going to give the blessing. God's going to take care of it. It just was a real encouragement. I, I, I think the teenagers got a little bit more in Sunday school. Um, I, I came out of it and I went, I need a bottle of water. Because <laughs> I just I was excited going into Sunday school Amen. this morning because it was it was a really good chapter of scripture. Amen. Really encouraging to me. Amen. Yeah, Brother Charlie walked over there, told him to settle down. We were trying to have class. <laughs> All right, someone else, take a couple more. Go ahead. I'm also thankful for Sunday school able to talk through and get some real good clarity on a difficult passage of scripture yeah yeah we have a great time studying the scriptures i see another hand grandma i just yeah i just <laughs> praise the lord for for the working of the spirit um last week and just throughout the the last few weeks um not just because my granddaughter got saved but um working in hearts and lives of people and getting people saved amen amen praise the lord praise the lord kevin i praise the lord for yesterday i was able to share with someone, I was up in Dartmouth um, for a big event, uh, over 4,000 people, and I was able to share with this gentleman about what happened to me last Sunday, and he's like, oh, he's like, we can't talk about that here, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, and I just raised a look for that, and I was talking to Brother Donahoe this morning, joking around with him, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, where were you yesterday? We could have used you to cater this event, because <laughs> 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 it would have been maybe organized, but it wasn't. <laughs> Um, he lives up in Bend, 
Bedford, Vermont. So I'm hoping to have a conversation with them tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone else? You got something, Jonah? Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. What he said, I'm in on. <laughs> Go ahead, John. I'm grateful for Isaiah chapter 12. Um, it's only six verses long, but it's really made me very keenly interested in memorization. In all six verses, there's just so much in each one of them. The Amen. The of salvation and the Lord's anger turning away. It's amazing. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mason. Yeah. When's the last time you said that about your sister? <laughs> We're looking forward to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get one more. We got one more somewhere? One more. Go ahead. For eight years with this fine woman. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What day? Today? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, happy anniversary. Praise the Lord. Oh. You going to stay around? <laughs> that's a good thing that's a good thing praise the lord amen all right let's grab our song books i have no idea what brother charlie is going to be preaching for us here in just a few moments but we were supposed to sing this song last sunday and it would have been fitting but it just wasn't the time and of the lord to be able to sing it in the afternoon service but I want to give a little history of this. You can see who wrote it, Fanny Crosby. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. You know, when, when the Lord's working and the Lord's speaking to hearts, it ought to be the desire of our heart, not sitting around saying, well, what time is it? Can we just get going and uh, get that over with? Fanny Crosby, if you study her history, she was blind, wrote thousands of songs, and she was actually in a prison service. And during the invitation time, the Holy Spirit of God was working in hearts and uh, making a difference in lives. And she heard a prisoner kneeling over there beside his chair. And while he was praying, she heard these words. She said, Lord, or he said, Lord, while you're working on others, Lord, don't pass me by. And work on my heart, don't pass me by. And she heard those, those words. She went home, sat down, and wrote the words to pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, wow on others. We ought to be praying and say, God, you're working on hearts. What do you want to do on my heart? God, don't, don't pass me by. I want something from the Lord too. And uh, so we're thankful for it. Then after we get done singing this, the Magners are going to come up and sing a special for us. But let's stand together. Page number 500. Pass me not, oh, gentle Savior.
did just before the message. The Magners are going to come up and sing a special for us. Yeah. so much for singing for us. I'm excited about how God's going to use this this couple down in Mexico. And um, I've heard there's not much traffic heading that direction, so you can get down there pretty easy, okay? And uh, so we're so thankful. It's wonderful to be able to have Charlie and Betsy Russell with us. And uh, I've been going back, I'm, well, I know we're well over uh, 20 years now, that uh, Brother Charlie and I, we traveled together and uh, missionaries with the Rock of Ages back when we were with them and uh, traveling this world. I don't know how many trips, thousands of miles him and I have been able to put on together and uh, we're thankful for it. And so one of those friendships that we just pick up where we left off and keep on rolling. And uh, so we're thankful God's using him in a great way. I like having our preacher for camp do the Sunday afternoon service so that the parents um, can know who's going to be preaching to their kids. Um, for the upcoming week, get to know him, get to know Miss Betsy. And I will say this, that uh, I wouldn't have them in if they didn't have a heart to be able to help our young people. And uh, I know they'll pour into them this week. They're not going to go hide in a corner somewhere. They're going to invest in them. And uh, we're thankful for it. Brother Charlie, you come on up here and make your way this direction. And I love this brother in Christ. And uh, so... Um, thank you, Brother Charlie, for making the trip up here. Miss Betsy, I'm looking forward to the week. Y'all yes, set? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's take our Bibles this evening and go to the book uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 30. The book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Let me say it is honor and privilege to be back here. Granite State Baptist Church. I think this is about our fifth trip to the New England area. And I've been looking forward to coming back. Uh, I've already been asked about my accent this morning. I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. So that, that explains... This explains my accent. So, no, born and raised in North Carolina, still in North Carolina. And uh, praise the Lord, uh, we flew up here this time. And that was a blessing. And uh, I thank God for safety and traveling grace. And, again, been praying about the meeting, seeking the Lord about the meeting, and am looking for the Lord to do some great things. Amen. So you be much in prayer. And I'll say more about that in the message and uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 1 and uh, go down to about verse number 9. The Bible says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were uh, taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself, in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fear, fail, recover all. Look at verse number nine. The Bible says, So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Bezor, where those that were left behind stayed. Let's read that again. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Bezor where those that were left behind stayed. Pastor told me that the theme of Youth Camp 2023 is all in. And I want to give you a few minutes on the subject and a charge to the Granite State Baptist Church on the thought, all in at home base, all in at home base. Pastor, would you pray? God just put his touch and power on the word this afternoon. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to be back in church. Lord, for the word of God to be able to be open. Lord, I do pray that you'd be with Charlie Russell right now. Lord, as he preaches the message that you put upon his heart, Lord, may we be receptive to that which the Holy Spirit of God would speak to us about. May we be obedient to you. And Lord, we'll thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'll give me your attention just for a few moments, I got three uh, things I want to pull out of this text. The first thing I want you to see in verses 1 through 3 is the raging battle. The raging battle. The Bible says that it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south 
and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. I want you to catch this phrase right here. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Uh, the time and the context of these verses is towards the end of the fugitive years of David's life. In just a short time, David is going to uh, ascend the throne uh, of Israel at the death of King Saul, which actually happens in the next chapter, in chapter number 31. Now, while David and his mighty men were joined up with Achash, the, the, the king of the Philistines, the Amalekites moved south, overthrew Ziklag, where David and his mighty men were camped out. And I want you to notice what the target uh, of these uh, Amalekites was when they invaded in verse number three. It said, so David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. Look what he says right here. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. The target of the enemy was the home. The target of the enemy was the family. The target of the enemy was that those precious wives and those precious children. Now, according to Bible scholars, our, our text is dated uh, around 1056 B.C., which gives us the, 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 the date that these verses took place about 3,080 years ago. But I don't think I have to stand up here this morning and convince you that although this text is over 3,000 years old, this same battle is still raging today. There is an enemy, and honey, he's not after your car. Excuse me. He's not after your car. He's not after your 401k. He's not after your four-wheeler. He's not after your jet ski. But there's an enemy on the prowl, and he is after the family. He is after the home. He is after your children. Amen. May I say this? Satan and the demons of hell have launched an all-out offensive against the family. Can I say that again? Satan and the demons of hell have launched an all-out offensive against the family. I, I hate to brag on Satan, uh, but I do have to give him some, some recognition. Man, he has really amped up and upped his game in recent years. You know, it seems like for 6,000 years, all Satan was interested in was robbing mankind of their spiritual identity. All the way back from the Garden of Eden to, to the present time, Satan has been trying to get us fire focus off God and our spiritual identity as creations of Jehovah God. But now Satan's not satisfied with that. Not only does he want to rob us of our spiritual identity, he's trying to rob our babies of their sexual identity. I was listening to a pastor uh, in Durham, North Carolina, just a, a little ways from Raleigh, the capital, and he was telling us right there in his backyard in Duke University Hospital in Durham, North Carolina, they're doing sexual reassignment surgeries, gender reassignment surgeries on children as young as four years old and, and y'all notice I didn't say California I didn't say San Francisco I said Durham North Carolina gender reassignment surgeries on kids as young as four years old he said there's another large 
healthcare conglomerates in that area that's doing gender reassignment surgeries on kids as young as three years old. Amen? Honey, we're in a war. We are in a battle. And the target of Satan, the target of the world, the target of this evil, godless system is our children and our homes. And that battle is raging and the target is the family. Then the second thing I want you to see this morning, a little bit more on a positive note, thank God not only was there a raging battle, but there was a resistance battle band a resistance band look at verses six through nine the bible says and david was greatly distressed let me let me tell you something uh there's nobody in this world i telling you there's nobody in this room right now that loves to laugh more and have a good time than charlie russell amen I'll laugh and crack a joke at the drop of a hat, and I've been guilty of dropping the hat. <laughs> Amen. I try my best to be upbeat. I try my best to be positive. I don't want to be one of these people that when I walk into a room, oh, no, here comes Charlie. I don't want to be that guy. But can I tell you something? We ought to be distressed about some things. Right. There's nothing wrong with being upset about some things. There's nothing wrong with being concerned about some things. There's nothing wrong with being heartbroken about some things. Can I take this a step further? There's nothing wrong with being angry about some things. Amen. The Bible says David was distressed. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see anywhere in this text where God rebuked David for being upset. Yeah. Amen. He was distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, Bring me hither the ephod. And Abithar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, thou shalt overtake them, and without fail recover all. Hey, thank God for David, amen. Thank God for him, and yes, his heart was broken. Yes, he was discouraged. Yes, he was upset, but hallelujah, he went to God, amen, and got his battery recharged. He said, Lord, if you'll help me, I don't want to roll over and play dead. He said, I don't want to roll over and put my head in the sand and hope this will go away. Lord, if you'll help me, I want to rise up and I want to make a difference and I want to go get my family back, amen. And let me say this, I see some positive things happening in the United States of America. Hallelujah, I see some parents rising up, yeah. amen. Is that not a blessing? Amen. To see some parents actually getting involved, going to some school board meetings. Let me tell you all something. My dad was an interesting character. And I'm going to leave that dog exactly where it's laying. He was an interesting character. I love my dad, but in the years I had him, I never quite figured him out. But... Uh, my dad was saved at an early age at a, at, a, at a revival meeting, and he was a truck driver, and, and he was a laid-back person, and you know how truck drivers are. He was a man's man. Hello, didn't always smell the best. <laughs> didn't always have gel in his hair. His shoes wasn't always shined. But Brother Peter, I'm telling you what's the truth. If there was a problem down at the schoolhouse, 
My father had no issue at all with combing his hair, shining his shoes, putting on a shirt, putting on a necktie, and he knew exactly where the principal's office was. <laughs> Amen. If there was an issue with a teacher, hey man, daddy didn't have no problem with taking a bath, ironing a, ironing a pair of britches, fixing up, looking like a human being, and going down to the schoolhouse. And like I said, my dad wasn't perfect. He was an interesting character, but God help us to have some more men like Floyd Russell. You ain't afraid to put on a shirt, put on a tie, come out of the garden, come out from under the truck or wherever and go down to the schoolhouse and say, hey, I got a problem with what's going on. And thank God there's some parents doing that, amen. Thank God there's some pastors and preachers rising up, amen. Thank for so many of God. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God for other pastors that are, that, are, that are rising up and speaking out. Thank God for that pastor in Durham, North Carolina, on the radio, on the World Wide Web, exposing what's going on at Duke University exposing what's going on in these hospitals. Thank God there's some preachers rising up. Thank God there for some politicians that are rising up. I want to tell you something. If a man has got one eye and half sense, and he's running for office, and he's got at least one finger on the pulse of our nation, he knows the majority of Americans are getting sick of this mess. Amen. So thank God there is a resistance movement going on. And can I tell you something, honey? We ought to do all we can to, to, to fan them on, to pray for them, to lift up their hands and praise God. Let's pray that it just keeps on going. Amen. I've never believed that, the, uh, that politics is the answer to every problem. Amen. I like what Ronald Reagan said. He said the, the scariest words you can hear come out of a human mouth is these words right here. Hello, I'm from the government and I've come to help. <laughs> That's the scariest words you'll ever hear come out of a human mouth. Is anybody listening this morning? Amen. Right? But I tell you what, honey, Having godly leaders, having moral leaders does make a huge difference. Amen. Amen. So thank God for a crowd that's rising up, some parents, some preachers, some politicians that are rising up, amen, and saying enough's enough. Then let me give you this, and this is where I was wanting to get to, and I, and I uh, I told you I wasn't keeping you long. I'm like, I'm like what Elizabeth Taylor told her fifth husband. She said, I won't keep you long, amen. <laughs> so we see the raging battle. We see the resistance band. And then the third thing I want you to see are those remaining behind. Those remaining behind. Let's look at verse number nine. The Bible says, so David went, he and 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Bezor. Look what he says right here. Where those that were left behind stayed. The Bible says 600 men went, or excuse me, David had 600 men all together. 400 of those men Amen. 400 of those men went with David. They were part of the resistance movement. They were part of the resistance band. But the Bible says 200 of them remained behind. They were left behind. To, some were left behind uh, to guard the, the goods that they had. And let's just face facts. Uh, some people just ain't cut out for the battlefield. Amen. I'm not for gun control at all. I'm pro-Second Amendment. 
But I want to tell you something. There's people on planet Earth. They scare me. They get a gun in their hand. <laughs> Number one, I'm scared they're going to shoot me or shoot their foot off. Amen. <laughs> David, I'm sure he told some of them boys, said, boys, I appreciate your heart. I appreciate you wanting to do something. He said, but I, I, you know, you just need to stay off that battlefield. Not only for your health, but for my health. Amen. <laughs> so there were 400 men that went, 200 that stayed behind. Amen. Say, so Brother Russell, what in the world has that got to do with Granite State Baptist Church here going to youth camp? Can I tell you something? Me and my wife, pastor and his wife, Brother Peter Jr., his wife, I don't know who I was going, but we're going to camp. Amen? But in reality, we all can't go. Amen? Some of you have got to stay behind. You got jobs. You got responsibilities. Amen? You got to be at work tomorrow. You can't be with the group that's going. You're with the group that's staying behind. But can I plead with you this morning? Would you get all in with that? Would you get all in? Amen. Would, would you get your calendar out? And if you're like me, honey, if you ever lose your calendar, you might as well lose your sanity. <laughs> would you get your calendar out? Would you schedule some time of prayer while we're gone? I don't think y'all heard me. <laughs> I said, would you get your planner out and schedule some time of prayer for these kids, yeah. your pastor, while we're gone? Yeah. That's a little bit, but we're, we're, we, we've, gone, we've gone from Lutheran to Methodist. <laughs> Let's see if we can get up to Baptist. I said, would you get your calendar out? Amen. Yeah. Would you schedule some time of prayer for these kids, for the adults that are going? Brother Peter said, I, I, I wanted my people to, 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 to hear the preacher uh, that's going. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing, man. I'm a chaplain at a prison. Hello? I ain't got a clue, but I'm going to go follow God. Somebody say amen right there. What are you saying, Rev? I need some, we, Pastor, we need some people here to get all in this week. Yeah. Amen. How I many you want these kids to get all in? Yeah. Amen. amen. How would you like, how'd you like to see these kids come back, fired up, ready to charge hell with a water pistol? Amen. You want to see them all in? Would you get all in? Amen. Would you stand behind us and pray for us? Amen. I'm getting ready to lose about 80% of you. <laughs> Would you get your calendar out? Would you schedule some time to fast? Amen, Brother Russell. That's good preaching. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Russell. I appreciate it. Now, I'm going to warn y'all. Amen. Preacher told me to be done about one. But if I have to shout, if I have to preach and do my own amen, and we're going to be about three o'clock getting out of here. <laughs> Hello? Would you, would you schedule a meal? Let me tell you something about, let me say a couple things about fasting. I hate fasting. <clears throat> Of all the spiritual disciplines, I hate fasting the worst. It's hard. Let me tell you something. It's, it's no coincidence that the first sin on planet Earth didn't involve heroin. It didn't involve cocaine. It didn't involve alcohol. The first sin on planet Earth involved food. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's a connection there, I'm telling you. And, and, and I don't know about your flesh, but, but when my flesh is cut off from food, it ain't happy. 
But let me tell you the second thing I've learned about fasting. Prayer moves the heart of God. Fasting moves the hand of God. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Prayer will move the heart of God. Fasting will move. And when I talk about fasting, I'm not talking about just skipping a meal. But it's taking that hour lunch that you would normally indulge on a Whopper <laughs> or a Big Mac or a burrito. And not just skipping a meal, but taking that hour and devoting it to praying for these kids. That's what fasting, it's not just skipping a meal. Athletes skip meals. Amen. Sometimes you go to the doctor, they say you need we want to do blood work, you need to fast. That's not what I'm talking about. It's taking that time. And I want to tell you something. I hate it and I despise doing it, but I'm going to tell you something, man. You want to see God do something, you not only pray, but you say take some time this week. The fast. I'm going to ask you to do a third thing. I don't know if anybody's done this, but with somebody, and I'm not talking about putting this on social media. I'm not talking about putting this out where weirdos can see it. <laughs> Amen. Y'all got weirdos in New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. We got weirdos in North Carolina. Somebody ought to get a list of everybody that's going, every kid that's going, all, everybody that's going, and get that list circulating out through email. So you'll have every name that you can go down that list and pray for each person individually. Amen. Amen. I need your prayers. Hello? Let me tell you something. Uh, <clears throat> if you think Charlie Russell uh, brought revival with him, you're sadly mistaken. I'm sure I'm going to unpack my luggage and find things I even forgot physically. <laughs> right? You think I brought revival? Great revivals are not preached up. Great revivals are prayed down. That's right. Amen. And I'm going to ask you one more time. I'm going to put the pressure on you. How many would love to see all these kids to get all in this week? Yeah. Amen. It may hinge on whether or not home base gets all in. Amen. But praise God, I'm going to tell you something. If home base gets all in, the pastor gets all in, the guest preacher gets all in, and these kids get all in, it's liable to get plumb wild around here. <laughs> Amen? Hello? No telling what God would do. But let me ask you a question. I, 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 and again, I'm just going to put the pressure on you. And what we'll, we'll do is, Pastor, you come on back up. I'm about done. As a matter of fact, I am done. You come on back up, brother. <laughs> Let's just stand our feet. And uh, I don't even think we need any music. I don't think we need any music. Would you, we're just going to open up the altar. How many would you just like to come and start right now and say, Preacher, I want to get all in. I want to get behind this youth camp. I want to pray. I want to maybe set aside a meal, maybe set aside a day to, to fast and, and focus my attention on praying for these kids. Folks, do you realize, do you realize what a war is raging for your children? Do you realize how much Satan would love to take these kids and just absolutely destroy their lives? Would you come? God spoke to your heart. Just come get around this. I don't think we need any music. I don't think we need a, a prolonged invitation. Won't you just come get around this altar this afternoon and just pray, Lord, help me to get all in. Get behind these kids. Get behind this meeting. Get behind this pastor. Get behind this guest preacher. Get behind these youth leaders that are going. Would you come and just join those that have already come and say, Lord, help me to get all in at home base. You pray to you get peace. Amen.
Amen. Pastor, won't you come pray for your people, brother? Pray God help them. Help us at youth camp. Our Father, we sure do love you. Lord, what a privilege and an opportunity it is to be able to serve you. Lord, we're looking for great things from a great God. Lord, I thank you for our church. And Lord, I do pray throughout this week. Lord, may it come back to hearts and minds on a regular occasion. And Lord, may we not brush that off when the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us and says, pray for them young people. Lord, may we pause, may we take that time. Lord, whether we can get on our knees or, Lord, we pray standing up or sitting in a chair, whatever it may be, I, I pray, dear Lord, or that you'd keep reminding us. Lord, may we not slack off just because we walk out of here today, and but, Lord, may you do something great. Lord, may you remind our church day after day after day. And, Lord, may we be all in for the glory of God. And Lord, whatever you desire to do, Lord, I pray that we'll be saying yes to you. And Lord, as it was saying a little bit earlier, Lord, I sure pray that you are our desire. And Lord, that we would just seek after you and follow you. Lord, I pray that you'd remove distractions this week. Things that would hinder us be standing in the way. Lord, I pray as a whole that our church be all in. And so, Lord, would you have your will and way. Thank you for those that are committing some time to prayer, to fasting. Lord, I just pray that it'll, it'll yield eternal results. And, Lord, we trust you for it. Lord, may we have a group of young people that come back, and they're all in, and they come back to a church that's all in. And, Lord, we'll sure thank you for all of it. And, Lord, what you're going to do, we, we, we thank you by faith and trust you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God's going to do something, I believe. Amen. I believe he's going to. And so I just made this statement just before I walked up here to service that I believe many times and I'm going to say we, that we are our own worst enemy, especially when it comes to our kids. Oh, it'll be okay. No. Let God get them in. Amen. Some that, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm praying God will get us all in. It's needed. It's needed. And I'm going to tell our young people, and they'll hear it again tonight, so don't tell me you already got a repeat. I'm going to tell them tonight to be praying that God will cause them to be all in. And if there's someone, another friend, that's not, then there's some that just need to be left behind. That's where I'm at with it where I'm at. Is that not the truth, Nate? It's the truth. So there's some that physically couldn't carry on, but there's some that they're not spiritually carry on, just need to be left behind, carry on for the Lord. So church, let's pray this week, okay? Hey, brother Peter, Go ahead. Can I say one more thing? Now that he asked, like I'm going to tell him no? <laughs> Let me say this. I think I think this needs saying. I'm 56 years old. Um, I've got a daughter, 30, married out on her own. Got a son, 28, married out on his own. But let me say this. I think me and my wife, one of the biggest mistakes we made is we underestimated the attack. We underestimated the attack. Just because things look good on the surface, amen, doesn't mean to slack up, doesn't mean to quit praying, quit fasting, amen. Do not underestimate 
how much Satan hates the home. Amen. That's a huge mistake. So, I'm sorry, brother, but uh, just You're fine. amen. Yeah. You say, I don't like that style. I don't think you can doubt his heart for our church and young people this week. Okay? So be praying for him. Be sensitive to the Lord. And uh, we're looking forward to a tremendous week. When he says this, that there's nobody on the face of the earth that likes to cut up and joke around, not, this is the truth. Betsy, you tell me, you, you testify against me if it's not the truth. They were at a funeral two months ago. <laughs> And him and another missionary, and Betsy had to walk up to both of them and say, y'all need to remember where you're at right now. <laughs> Truth? Truth? Truth. Truth. <laughs> y'all need to remember where you're at right now. You're at a funeral, so tone it down. <laughs> and so, anyway, I want to be able to uh, help them out. Have we heard anything from Miss Darlene, Miss Crystal? Okay, okay, so let's keep praying for Miss Darlene and the family, okay, and her sister, and uh, for the Lord's will. Keep praying for Miss Mary Bailey, of course, and her daughter passing away this past week. And uh, so just keep praying for one another, okay? And uh, we're going to head to camp, be here Thursday night. And uh, now listen, there's no ladies' Bible study tomorrow night. There is men's Bible study on Tuesday. Brother Jordan takes care of men's Bible study. And uh, so we're sure looking forward to that, okay? And then, of course, remember Brother Bruce's surgery on Thursday morning, okay? And so I do, I'd do. i like to do this. Brother Jordan, can you help grab a, an offering plate back there? we got the Magners that are here with us and uh, the Russells, and we want to be able to take care of them this week. So um, we got camp, I believe, taken care of. And uh, we're all set there. Want to be able to make sure they get a good love offering, and um, and be able to be a blessing uh, for them this week. Okay, let's dismiss in prayer. And then uh, now, listen, we do have a lot for the next couple hours, and so um, right now, Miss Crystal and I, Brother Peter, Miss Amy. Um, we're not babysitting for the next two hours while we're packing things up, okay? And uh, we're getting ready. We're going to grab a bite to eat and be ready. Probably by 2.30, we're going to be loading everything in the van, and uh, everybody can start putting their luggage in, taken care of. And so, But we are around, so if necessary, let us know, and uh, we'll be able to help take care of some things, okay? It's going to be a, a wonderful week, and uh, asking the Lord to be able to do something. Amen. How many are going to pray for our young people throughout this week? going to pray for them, and uh, let's be all in. Some couldn't even raise their hand for praying. I'm praying God's getting a hold of some of our young people. All right, let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. And Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you that it's true. And uh, Lord, I'm praying you'll continue to save souls. Lord, there's some, I believe, seated right here, right now. They still need to be gloriously saved and uh, surrender to the Lord. I pray that you would convict hearts, make it miserable in their sin, Lord, until they trust Christ. What I pray for us as we go off to camp, I pray for, Lord, as, as we look at it, that, that, Lord, we are all in for you. And, uh, Lord, help us to be a church that's all in. And uh, so, Lord, may we be sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And, uh, Lord, we'll thank you for it. Give safety now, Lord, as, as we head home, and then safety as we head up towards the camp now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You are dismissed.